Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video that I definitely stole from Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers. She did this like a year ago, I think, and I'm finally at that time where I can film it because I am ranking Mariana Zapata's books from my least favorite to my favorite. She has 12 books in her backlist and I've read 11. I will explain to you why I did not read the last one, but I love Mariana Zapata. I've been reading her for years now and some of them are so nostalgic to me because my first few I read by her are definitely like my all-time favorites by her and I would love to reread them at some point, but she is the queen of slow burn and I cannot read her books back to back. I need to take a break. I feel like with her books, especially for All Roads Lead Here, they're very, very slow burn and you're like, this is so slow. I'm dying. Can these people get together already? Like, come on. And then when you get to the end and you get that like satisfaction of them getting together, you're just like, this is amazing. This is the best thing I've ever read. I love it. And you forget the very slow pace you had to get through to get to that HEA and I feel like the payoff just feels so good for most of her books. For some of them though the payoff didn't pay off enough for me so that's why they were not as high on this list but I love her books just once you get that satisfaction of this couple who has been pining for each other even not even pining sometimes they don't even interact for half the book and you're just like talk to each other do something with each other and it just that's just her style and I love it so she has posted she's writing some more but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about why I did not read the last book that I have so number 12 is the only book I have not read because my sister hated this book. My sister loves Mariana Zapata. I was really excited for this one. She absolutely hated it and I know it's most a lot of people's least favorite and I only had three books left to read by her so I read two back to back and I just could not make myself read another book by her back to back to back especially if it's one that I wasn't looking forward to and that's hands down. This one is actually about a character that was in the wall of Winnipeg and me and I loved his character in that book but I just have not heard the best things about this book and I wanted to do this video and I've already read two books and one of them was a three star read and I was just like I cannot go through this again and possibly not like it. I felt very slumpy, not motivated to read so I decided to not force myself to read this book for this video. So this one is technically it just does not count but it will be number 12 because I haven't read it yet but let me know if you've read it and liked it because I don't know a lot of people who do. Number 11 I think is the consensus. This is the only book I've read by her that I've given two stars and that is the best thing. This this one was just very long and I did not love the secret the heroine was hiding and I just didn't really, I don't even remember if I liked anything about this book. I need to go look at my Goodreads review because this is one of the books, I think this is one of the only ones by her where I'm just like, what even happened? in this book. I just didn't love it and I'm pretty sure this was Lacey's least favorite too when I watched her video. I do not not like Mariana Zapata books. Most of her books I've read are a four or a five star read. Almost all of them are. Okay so the literally the first line of my review is this was boring. This was so boring. I said the story was very redundant. The first 20% of the book was the main character complaining about how much she hates. Oh yeah because he ghosted her and that's all she talked about for like 20% of the book and then I feel like the hero was very very boring. And I said the reason he cut her off was very stupid. So I had some very strong opinions about this book when I wrote my Goodreads review. So two stars for that one. Really not a fan. The next one though, coming in at number 10. I am so, so sad I didn't love this book because I've been putting it off because I felt like I was going to love it. I put off books that I think are going to be like new all-time favorites because I'm very intimidated by them and I want to save them for a special moment. But people did tell me I should have read the audiobook first. I should have listened to it on audio because it was a lot better pacing wise. But the last book that I read, which is the reason why I couldn't pick up this book, is Dear Aaron. Now, people had a lot of mixed feelings when I was posting on my Instagram while I was reading it saying this book is so hard to read, it's so boring. We have letters and emails and IM messages for literally the first 250 pages. They do not meet each other in person. Well, oh, no, they don't talk on the phone until 260 pages in. So the first entire half of this book is just letters and emails and I was falling asleep. I was very bored. It took me a few days just to get through this first half even though I was like, oh, it's just emails and letters, like it should, I should fly through that. I was so bored because he is in the military and she is like signed up one of those programs where like you're matched up with someone in the military and you like chat with them send them stuff and so it was like some of it was funny and I do think it's necessary for like the second half of the story getting that part of their lives and their interactions like some of it was fun but it was way too much it was way too boring for a lot of it I was so bored and then when they got together I was just like this is okay and then what made me really really mad is that she explains her first time with someone and how it was not good and she was completely embarrassed by it. He was like, 
I hated his reaction. I don't want to spoil anything, but like his reaction was so uncalled for and he made her cry so many times, even though it was a lot more of like her not communicating and jumping to conclusions. I hated that he put her in that situation. So I was just getting so mad at him and like it was super cute when they first met. Like I thought I was like, okay, now this book is picking up. I'm going to love it. I didn't. I gave it three stars, which I think is being generous, but... I just couldn't with that book. I'm sorry to everybody who loved that book. I just couldn't. Okay, so the next one, now I'm getting, I literally am getting my four star reads. So all these are really good. I really enjoyed all these and I feel like one of them should maybe be higher, but I haven't read in a while, so I don't remember. But the next one I have is Rhythm Chord and Malakin. I don't know how to say that name, but this one is one of her less popular ones. I mean, it was good. I liked it. I have not read it in a long time. It was one of my early ones that I read by her and the heroine is like going on tour with them, this band and she is like selling merch and stuff and like it was fine it was fun it was a good romance but like nothing amazing and nothing like that I would fall over to read like a, like compared to her other books this was just like mediocre for her it was still a four-star read I still enjoyed it but nothing else to say about it then the next one is one I've recently just finished as well and it was good as well I really enjoyed it for what it was I do think it went on a little too long but I feel like she has this trope of these like older grumpy heroes that are like super protective of the heroine like I'm thinking Rhodes I just I love him so much. He's he's a little higher. Um, not as high as I would have liked, but he is higher. Um, and then, like, wait for it. Like, those heroes are just, like, 10 years older than her and, like, there for her. They will move the world for her. So the next one is Under Lock, and I just read this. I think it is a great introduction to motorcycle romances because our hero, Locke, is in a motorcycle gang. He does work in a tattoo shop, and she is the receptionist, and I love that whole atmosphere. I was like, oh, maybe I should go out and get a tattoo now. I just really liked it, and she's dealing with a lot of drama with her brother, and he causes, like, this rival MC gang to come after them, and so Locke is trying to be protective of her, and, like, there's some really funny, lighthearted moments in here, and I I really really did enjoy this one this is probably like a higher four star read I only have two four star reads left then all the rest are five stars so I hate that I've put this so low on this list because I did really enjoy this book but I just didn't like I said love it as much as all of her other ones but I really liked how he opened up to her and he was like a little bit older than her and so overprotective of her like I love that trope and this one had that and I just love the whole they work at a tattoo shop she went to a convention with them there was like the sharing a room trope and they were like road tripping together Together, and then she had to live with him and so there's a lot of forced proximity in here I really enjoy this one but still not like an all-time favorite okay so the next one's my last four star read by her and this one was one I was I think it's four stars was a little disappointed people said it's their all-time favorite by her and I expected to be obsessed with it but it was a little too slow for me just a little in the beginning I was like dying in the beginning and that is wait for it this one is really good because she is a single mom to her brother's children because her brother passed away and so she is trying to bring up these children and people see her as like a young teen mom kind of thing because she is very young she would have had to have them as a teen if they were her children and so people judge her a lot there's just a lot of baseball in here and not like sexy baseball it's like these kids are going to their baseball practice and so I was like really bored with how much baseball practice we had now we are developing her relationship with the hero because he is the baseball coach he is coaching I believe for his nephew's team and their neighbors I love a good neighbor romance I definitely want to do a neighbor trope recommendation video but to me there was just like too much of the downtime in here but like I said he's very protective of her he comes over all the time to help out and it's so sweet how much they have like meals together and how good he is with her nephews and I love the single parent trope and this one had that a lot but it was just like too slow in the beginning for me I was just like dying to get to the good stuff so this one I feel like just was a little too long but like I said I really enjoyed the whole coaching aspect the neighbor aspect and especially when they first meet was so funny because he's super grumpy which I really loved so four star read I still really enjoy this one it just like pains me how low on this list these are this is number seven and it was so good still, but she just writes too many good things. The next one is one that I read a long time ago, but it was so much fun. I do need to reread this because I don't remember too much about the plot, but that is Lingus. This one is her porn star romance. So the heroine and her friend, I remember, like are at a convention and it is a, I think it's a porn convention. And he, they meet the hero at this convention and he's like a really popular 
porn star. And it's their romance. And the, I honestly don't remember too much about this plot. This is one of her shorter ones. It is not 500 pages yet. Are all the rest like super... Oh my god, this book is almost... Okay, looking at this book, I get why I didn't like it because this is literally almost 700 pages. That is ridiculous. Okay, this one is short for her and it's not even 500 pages yet. So it is just at like 490. But I think this one was a lot of fun. Very unique. I don't remember too much about the plot, but this one definitely number six. I gave this five stars, but out of all my five star reads, this was like the least five star out of all the five star reads. Number five is one I don't own physically. I do own eight of her books physically, so that means four of them I have to get my hands on, but the next one is Luna and the Lie. I completely forgot about this one, but I was talking in a live show to Cheyenne from That Tell Book Girl, who was talking about this book, and I was like, oh, is that the one that I hated? Because I was thinking about the best thing. She was like, excuse me, no, and was like, remember, he works at like the auto body shop, and she works there too, because she like works on um, like decals and like painting and all this stuff, and and um, I was like, uh, yes, because we have the older grumpy hero, and I loved him. I love an overbearing grumpy older hero, and that is what this guy is in Luna and the Lie, and I just remember really, really loving this and their dynamic together, and I love how a lot of her heroines have really interesting jobs, and they're really passionate about their jobs too, so in this one, the heroine does work at this, like, auto body shop, and she really enjoys her work there, and it's, like, office place romance. Some of them, they do, like, work very closely with one another, and it's very forced proximity, so I got those vibes really from Underlock as well. I feel like this one and Underlock reminded me a lot of each other, but I really enjoyed this one. I, like I said, really would love to reread this. A lot of these I have not read in a while. Two of these were my more recent reads, but like my top two are ones that I read so long ago. Need to reread, but I know I love them. So this one was definitely a good one. Okay, the next one like pains me. It's number four because I feel like number four is so low still on the list for a book that I'm absolutely obsessed with, but like I'm absolutely obsessed with these top four. These top four are some of my favorite books and I'm obsessed with them. So the next one is Luke up with love. Oh my gosh. So what's funny is a lot of these overlap. So I just read, this is actually the heroine in here is this heroine sister. And so they talk about them a lot. So I definitely recommend reading her books in order if you can, because also when I was reading, wait for it, her cousin is actually Sal from Culty. So like they are all very interconnected and I don't know how many more are interconnected. This guy was also in this book. So her, her all of her books are like in the same universe and have a lot of the same characters who are related to one another. So know that going in, but like this book was amazing. I just remember being obsessed with Lukov. His animals, like I have two dogs. I would have 10 dogs if I could. I'm obsessed with animals and the fact that like he had animals. That's all I'm gonna say about him, but that scene just sticks out to me. I think that he is her best friend's brother, and she is in her skating career, and she is, like, really in a lull in her skating career, and so Lukov is, like, super good at skating and he's like gonna win everything and he needs a new partner and she partners up with him. I love the Cutting Edge movies. Like one and two are classics. Two definitely still counts. I love Cutting Edge too. Cutting Edge one is a classic as well and so I love the figure skating aspect. I love sports romances. So I absolutely love this one. I love the enemies to lovers because they really are very prickly and don't really like each other but then they get to know each other and it's just so good. I love this one so much. But it's only number four. It's only number four. How much I love this book. I feel like it should be number one but it's not. All roads lead here. This one, this one is so good. This one's her newest release. It came out over a year ago though, and this one is like a grumpy mountain man, and I love him. He's actually like a park ranger, and he's a single dad, but I think his dynamic with his son and why he has his son and his relationship with his son's mom is so interesting, and I love that Marianne Zapata did that in here, and our heroine is running away because her, I love this aspect, her mother had gone missing hiking, and they never, she never got closure. They don't know what happened to her mother, and she is running away from a very very long relationship that ended and if she's like knows very famous people and they never got married but it was like a common law marriage for how long they were together so she's pretty well off and she decides to rent an apartment in this town where her mother had disappeared and that apartment is actually Rhodes's son who leased it like he Rhodes did not give his son permission to rent out their garage so he's so angry when she shows up but very, 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 very slowly they fall for each other. This one is one where they barely have any interaction with one another until like halfway through, but Rhodes, Rhodes is amazing. He literally would drive hours for her and like go through a rainstorm for her up a mountain and back. Like he will do anything for her and I loved it so much. And it's so sweet and there was Christmas in here which was so sweet. I just love this book. You guys probably know what the last two are. 
and these were my first two from her. Number two is gonna be The Wall of Wood and Peg and Me. I know this is some people's favorite. I, this was my first book by her. I was obsessed. We have Marriage of Convenience, and we have her. She was his assistant. He is this Canadian football player. I'm pretty sure he's working in the US, though. That's why he's called the Wall of Winnipeg. He is just this really successful football player, and he doesn't treat her the best, and she finally decides she wants to put all her effort into, like, I don't remember what she wants to do, like, graphic design or something. She wants to start her own career, and so she quits, and he shows up on her doorstep and is like, will you marry me? Because he needs to stay in the United States, for a green card or something, I don't remember. But the slow burn in here, but I loved her friendship with his friend and she's training for either a marathon or a half marathon. Everything about this book was just amazing. I love their dynamics. I love them when they got together. Like I said, I read this years ago and it's still just like the feelings that stick out to me. I remember seeing this, re this thing on Instagram about like, be patient with people who don't remember anything about a book but how they felt and that's why it's their favorite. Like I loved, my experience reading this book. I don't remember much more about the plot than what I have already said, but I just know it's so good. It's so good. I loved it. Number two, but my favorite trope. I have to go with number one. I have to go with Colty. This one, one of my favorite tropes that I didn't even know was a trope is like they loved them as a fan. Like the other one was super famous and they've spent their like childhood growing up like loving them as a celebrity and like this one has that. So Colty is a famous soccer player and Sal has grown up loving Colty and now she is on a soccer team and he is the coach and it is their romance and of course Colty is very like brutish and standoffish because he doesn't want any of the girls to try anything with him because he knows he is a really good looking soccer player but I loved everything about this book. I loved her relationship with her dad and and it's just, I need to read this again. Um, I love how her dad was a fan of Colty. If I remember, like, this one, definitely a first on my list to reread. It is so good. I love the coach athlete dynamic in a forbidden romance and this one had that and they're not that far off in age but this was just so good i love sports romances i love that mariana zapata has heroines who are so strong and successful these heroines are so competitive and so good at what they do and so passionate about what they do which i love and even like this one she's like i'm quitting to go follow my dreams and i love that about it so i really love all of her heroines and i love this book so so much so number one for me. Those are all the rankings of my favorite Mariana Zapata books. Let me know what your favorites are, what your ranking is. I would love to hear. Let me know how many you've read by her as well, and hopefully we get a new book by her soon, but we will see. That's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye.